Hi, it's time for another math easy solution. Now, we're going to discuss further into calculus with parametric curves, and now look at an example, example one of these uh, area series. And uh, in this example, we'll look at uh, finding the area under one arch of the cycloid, and having this uh, formula x equals r uh, theta minus sine theta, and y equals r one minus cosine theta. Again, recall this is just the parametric equations for a cycloid and put the links below for a cycloid make sure to watch that so if we want to know the area under one arch of this first let's well recall that a cycloid the shape of it is just uh, it's of the form that looks something like this we had a uh, x y axis like this x y the curve looks something like this and then it just keeps repeating itself and if you go backwards it goes like that and this one right here is y equals to well, f of x. Yeah, where this function, uh, you could write these as a function of x right here. Uh, y equals f of x is the end result right here, the, this curve. And if we want to know the area, the area looks something like that. And that's the area we want to solve for a. And now to understand uh, how to solve for this area, we'll note again that the, uh, pair, uh, the, the cycloid curve is formed by rotating a circle and tracing the point on it. For example, if the point's here, then the circle's going to be, let's say radius is going to be somewhere like this, all the way across, and you basically rotate this across like that. And in this case, we have the angle here, theta. So this is the angle, that's the parameter. Theta. Now for this cycloid, we start off at zero, and then as a one full rotation is actually, well, just two pi r. This is just the circumference of this entire circle. That's just two pi r, which rotates a full two pi or 360 degrees or two pi radians. And then, uh, like I've showed before, uh, the distance from here to here is just two pi r, and then it just keeps repeating every two pi r. So then this, yeah, and what this also means is that this uh, circle as it rotates initially, the theta at this starting point is equal to zero and a full 360 degrees again, that is theta is equal to two pi radian. So full rotation is one arch and that's the theta. And then this one right here is our X value. That's just on the X axis zero. And uh, yeah, zero, one X is zero, theta is also zero like that. So now what I want to do is, well, recall my earlier video on parametric equations and areas, or parametric calculus and areas. I showed that the area, if we had uh, equals to, let's say, so the area is equal to from A to B of f of x dx. Yeah, this was equal to uh, the integral by using substitution. This is integral from alpha to beta of now the parameter and where the parameter is, well, g of theta. In this case, theta uh, as opposed to t. So t is the same as equal to theta. So in my derivation, I used t, but this one, we're just going to switch to theta because we're dealing with theta. And then we multiply this by um, f prime of theta d theta. And this is by substitution. This equals to, well, dx. And this equals to y equals to, well, f of x by using substitution. And again, by imposing on here, this is g of theta, and this is f of theta, like that. So again, make sure to watch my earlier video on derivation of this, it's just a substitution rule. And then this uh, a, in our case, we're starting from 0 to 2 pi r. So this equals to 0, this equals to 2 pi r. But now we're going to use the parameter theta. So instead of x, we go from theta equals to 0. And then beta is equal to uh, 2 pi like that. Yes, yeah, so we're going from 0 to 2 pi as opposed to 0 to 2 pi r. So now let's uh, write these down. Yeah, so we have y equals f of x. We'll use substitution rule to get y equals to g of theta. And this equals 2 from above. That is just r, 1 minus cosine theta. So r1 minus cosine theta. And likewise, we have to get this. Uh, we need to get this f prime of theta. So we know x is equal to f prime of theta, which equals to r. And then recall, this is just theta minus sine theta. And just to double check, yeah, we have here. So x is this r uh, theta minus sine theta. That equals f of, uh, f of theta like that. So we have this. Now we want to get the derivative of this. So 
to do that, well, f prime of theta is equal to, yeah, this equals two, the derivative of this is just a constant, so we just leave that out, so r, and then theta derivative is one, sine theta is just, well, cosine theta, so we have a minus cosine theta, and this, in fact, equals the same thing here. So now what we could do is, well, throw this all inside, so what we end up getting is the area is equal to the integral from zero to two pi of now uh, g of theta, which is this r one minus cosine theta, f prime of theta is r one minus cosine theta, so that's just, well, r squared one minus cosine theta uh, squared like that. So we just have it squared is the same thing, and then d theta. So now we have to solve this integral. Before I do that, we can uh, simplify this one minus cosine uh, theta. Yeah, this cosine theta squared, and we could use trig identities. So what we'll do is one minus cosine theta squared. First, we'll expand this. It's using the FOIL method. This is the same thing as writing one minus cosine theta times one minus cosine theta. This equals two. Well, this times this, that's one. And then one times by negative cosine theta, that's negative cosine theta. And then a negative cosine theta times one, that's another negative cosine theta, so we just put a two there. And then this multiplied by this negative cosine theta times negative cosine theta is positive. Negative becomes a positive. Positive cosine squared theta. And now to further simplify this, we can uh, eliminate uh, or just remove this squared by using a trig identity. So recall, so recall the trig identity. I'll put the proof in the video link below. Uh, it's it's the half angle identity, and that is well cosine squared theta. This is also equal to one plus cosine two theta. So we have the angle. So this one here, this angle becomes, well, this is two times by that angle. And now what we have, yeah, so this theta is half of this two theta divided by two. So that's the identity, and we could throw this inside here so that we could get rid of the square and it'd be easier to integrate. So what this means now is we'll bring this down. We have one minus cosine theta squared is equal to one minus two cosine theta, and then we have, well, plus, uh, plus one over two, this is gonna be, I'll just simplify this, one over two plus cosine two theta. Now this one and plus, plus a half, that's just, well, the common denominator is two over two, so we get three over two. So this equals three over two minus two cosine theta plus cosine two theta, I forgot to divide by two there. So yeah, just divide by two across the board. Yeah, so now we could just throw this all in, and what we eventually get is thus, the area is equal to, and let's just go refresher, zero to two pi, and now we have an r squared, and then multiplied by this, which is this entire thing. And the r squared is just constant, just the radius. We remove it out, so we have from zero to two pi, and this is our one minus cosine theta squared which is three over two minus two cosine theta plus again a half cosine two theta and then d theta. And now we could, well, solve this integral. This equals to r squared is a definite integral, so we can do this. Uh, integral three over two is just three over two and then theta, it's the constant. And two cosine theta integral of this, well, that's just two sine theta because the derivative of sine theta is just cosine theta. And now here we have plus, uh, this is one half uh, integral of cosine two theta. That's just sine two theta. So sine two theta is gonna be cosine two theta, but then multiply this by, yeah, by the uh, chain rule. So then we have to move the two down, but to remain one half, we need to divide by another two. So this is four. So that the, uh, when we take the derivative, sine two theta becomes cosine two theta times two, and then divide by four, two over four is just, well, uh, it's just gonna be one over two. So we have that, and this is from evaluating from zero to two pi. So now we can just plug that inside. So this is r squared, and then we have uh, three over two theta minus, well, two pi. So now we have sine, two sine, 
2 pi like this, plus 1 over 4 sine, this is going to be 4 pi. But what we know is, yeah, you know, what we know is that sine of 2 pi, this is just 0. That's just 0, and you could even uh, recall, and again here, we're going to subtract this by uh, zeros across the board. We're going to have a, uh, inside here is going to be 3 over 2, 0, minus 2 sine uh, theta, that's just, well, sine 0 is also 0. Then plus sine 0 is 0, so we just have all zeros there. We can just ignore them. And also sine 4 pi is also 0, and you could see this, just a quick recap, if you have uh, theta like this, you had y, for example, this goes something like this. This is just our sine theta. So this is at 0, this is at uh, 2 pi, and likewise it repeats at 4 pi. So at 0, at 0, etc. Like that. So let's say recall. So what that means is all we're left with is the area is just this. Everything else becomes 0. So what we have is, yeah, what we have is r, so a equals 2 r squared. Oh, and also forgot to plug in the 2 pi. This is 2 pi right there. So we evaluate to put the 2 pi inside. Everything else is 0. So what we're left with, these cancels, we're just left with 3 pi. So we're left with 3 pi r squared. Yeah, and what's interesting is note that an area of a circle is just, well, pi r squared is a famous formula like that. So this means it's three times the area of a circle, or of that circle that's actually being rotated. And yeah, so again, the, the result says that the area under one arch of the cycloid is three times the area of the rolling circle that generates the cycle. That's quite uh, fascinating, actually. And in fact, Galileo, Galileo guessed this result, but it was first proved by the French mathematician Roberval and the Italian mathematician Tarsilius. Is, uh, history lesson from my calculus book. And now here's a brief history lesson that just I uh, got from Wikipedia, just a brief bio about uh, Robovel and uh, Torsili and Galileo I've done uh, many times before. You can check my earlier videos, put a link below. Uh, basically from the Wikipedia page of Gilles de Robovel, he was born uh, in 1602, lived until 1675, a French mathematician, and born at Robovel near Bevois, France. His name was originally Gilles Persson or Gilles Persinier were with Rubbervel at uh, the place of his birth. Uh, interesting uh, factoid about him. Another of Rubbervel's discoveries was a very general method of drawing tangents by considering a curve as described by a moving point whose motion is the resultant of several simpler motions. Uh, he also discovered a method of deriving one curve from another by means of which finite areas can be obtained equal to the areas areas between certain curves and their asymptotes to these curves we which uh, were also applied to some of to some quadratures I'm not sure how to pronounce it Evangelista Torsila gave the name rubber valian lines and this is all before calculus was fully developed as uh, the method I just went in solving uh, for the area of a uh, arch of a cycloid, which is much simpler than what they were doing. Now here's a Wikipedia page of Evangelista Torsili. Uh, he was um, yeah, he was born 1608 till 1647, so uh, lived about the, around the same time as Robert Val. He was an Italian physicist and mathematician, best known for his invention of the barometer. That's quite fascinating. And, uh, but is also known for his advances, uh, advances in optics and work on the method of indivisibles. Mm, that's interesting. I might look into indivisibles in later videos. Stay tuned for that. So basically, after Galileo's death on uh, January 8, 1642, Grand Duke Fernando, uh, Fernando uh, II de Medici, Medici uh, asked him to succeed Galileo as a grand ducal mathemata mathematician and chair of mathematics at the University of Pisa. Some uh, quite interesting qualifications and names. Right before the appointment, Torsili was considering returning to Rome because of there being nothing left for him in Florence. 
In this role, he solved some of the great mathematical problems of the day, such as finding a cycloid's area and center of gravity. As a result of the study, he wrote the book Opera Geometrica, in which he described his observation. That's quite fascinating. Yes, this is one of the great mathematical problems, just finding these areas and center of gravity. This was all, again, before calculus was fully developed and how pretty straightforward I went over and solved the area of an arch of a cycloid. In this video, this is yeah much simpler than the methods they used. But as you can see, there's a big argument and debate going on for years, uh, and trying to solve these kind of problems, which uh, in some ways we take for granted. But anyways, as you can see, a powerful calculus. You can just find the area of this arch, and it can do uh, yeah calculus can do absolutely amazing things. As we'll get to in later videos, so stay tuned for that. Anyways, like always, uh, yeah you can download these exact notes in the link below. Also, if you're the first person to donate uh, to my Patreon account, even just a dollar, uh, you'll get a shout out. So far, I have zero Patreons. Hashtag sad face. But yeah, if you want to help up, it's a great way to do so. Anyways, thanks for watching, and uh, yeah, stay tuned. Stay tuned for another math easy solution.